Yesterday, a team of researchers at NASA announced that they might have found signs of life on Mars, or more exactly, they might not not have found signs of life on Mars. So let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. Today I want to take a little break from looking for signs of artificial intelligence to look for signs of actual life on other planets. I'm going to take a quick moment first though to show you my new toy. So we have the SpaceX chopsticks. If you don't know, SpaceX is selling these, aka the chopsticks that catch the super heavy booster or the Starship soon. That's going to go back on my shelf very shortly and it will be a little bit of background there, but I will also use them sometime. Maybe after Starship is caught by the chopsticks the first time I will eat with the chopsticks just as a form of celebration. But anyway, in general, they're going to be back there as set decoration. Alrighty, so on to the main event here. This is from NASA, so this is an official site. After a year of scientific scrutiny, a rock sample collected by the Perseverance rover has been confirmed to contain a potential biosignature. The sample is the best candidate so far to provide evidence of ancient microbial life on Mars. So I want to dig into this a little bit, and then I also want to talk about the consequences if this is true. So first of all, let's drill down into this a little bit. So the NASA team says they have a little video here. It's kind of cool. It shows, you know, billions of years ago when this jet crater area was underwater what it would have looked like and then of course the Mars Perseverance rover going and taking a sample. So the Perseverance team discovered the rock formation in an ancient now dry riverbed in Jezero crater and here you can see what it would have looked like billions of years ago and instruments revealed that it's composed of clay and silt. On earth these are excellent preservers of past microbial life. And then down here NASA is making this data available to wider science community for further study to confirm or refute its biological potential. And all of the brouhaha is over this image here plus some samples that were actually analyzed by the rover itself and in particular it's these sort of leopard spot looking things that's what they called it not me but anyway <laughs> looks blotchy and everything but the idea here is that these could be signs of microbial mats or something along those lines and this was captured in a water rich environment and then turned into sedimentary rock here so if you've read any of the headlines out there a lot of them are like life on mars things like that so i want to drill down into this and get into the original paper but first i'm going to look at this NASA says Mars rover discovered potential biosignature last year. So this is an official NASA press release, but then I'm going to go look at the original paper. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I am not an exogeologist. It's like way beyond my capability to understand it. But anyway, first let's look at this. I'm going to go ahead and blow that up. This is the same video that we just saw a second ago. A sample collected by NASA's Perseverance Mars rover from an ancient dry riverbed in Jezero crater could preserve evidence of ancient microbial life. So a lot of conditionals and things like that. Taken from a rock named Shayeva Falls last year. The sample called Sapphire Canyon. I love these names and everything. They've also got Valhalla Rock and stuff like that. There's all the cool names. They get to name these things. Contains potential biosignatures according to a paper published Wednesday in the journal Nature. And that's a big publication and it has been vetted for over a year. So this has been a significant period of time that it's been looked at. So that's, that's actually a good sign. A potential biosignature is a substance or structure that might have biological origin, but requires more data or further study before a conclusion can be reached about the absence or presence of life. So that's the major caveat. And I just want to call this out for the end of this video here. Acting NASA Administrator Sean Duffy said, NASA's commitment to conducting gold standard science will continue as we pursue our goal of putting American boots on Mars's rocky soil. Then of course, we've got another of these images here. Perseverance came upon Shayeva Falls in July 2024 while exploring the Bright Angel Formation, a set of rocky outcrops on the northern and southern edges of Naretva Vallis, an ancient river valley measuring a quarter mile or 400 meters wide that was carved by water rushing into the Jezero crater long ago. So it's really almost without doubt now that there was active water on the surface of Mars at some point in its history. And as it turns out, the researchers believe this formation was actually formed relatively recently in, you know, in geological terms. So it's actually very cool because that means that water might have been on the surface of Mars more recently than we expected it to have been. Continuing on here, with the publication of this peer-reviewed result, NASA makes this data available to the wider science community for further study to confirm or refute its biological potential. So that's really cool because of course, extraordinary claims need extraordinary proof. So it's very cool that they're allowing other people to look at this to refute it if they can, right? They, if they can refute it, that's great. But if not, that points to signs of life on Mars. The rover science instruments found that the formation's sedimentary rocks are composed of clay and silt, which on earth are excellent preservers of past microbial life. They are also rich in organic carbon, sulfur, oxidized iron or rust and phosphorus. And just as a quick point, rust has to form in the presence of oxygen. It's iron plus oxygen. So that's very cool. That means there would have been more oxygen on the planet at the time when this rust actually developed. 
Then we get a quote here. The combination of chemical compounds we found in the bright angel formation could have been a rich source of energy for microbial metabolism. So that's great too. So not only does it look like it's microbes, but also this would have been a source of energy for them, which of course is rather important. You have to have energy to live, said perseverance scientist Joel Hurowitz of Stony Brook University, New York, and lead author of the paper. And just look at how many authors there are when we get to it in just a second. But just because we saw all these compelling chemical signatures in the data didn't mean we we had a potential biosignature, we needed to analyze what the data could mean. First to collect data on this rock were Perseverance's Pixel and Sherlock instruments, and yes, they're all about the acronyms at NASA. While investigating Shayeva Falls, an arrowhead-shaped rock measuring 3.2 feet by 2 feet or 1 by 0.6 meters, they found what appeared to be colorful spots. The spots on the rock could have been left behind by microbial life if it had used the raw ingredients, the organic carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus, in the rock as an energy source. In higher resolution, Resolution images, the instruments found a distinct pattern of minerals arranged into reaction fronts, in other words, points of contact where chemical and physical reactions occur, the team called leopard spots. The spots carried the signature of two iron-rich minerals, vivianite, hydrated iron phosphate, and gregite, I think, <laughs> iron sulfide. Vivianite is frequently found on earth in sediments, peat bogs, which of course is a sign of active life and water, and around decaying organic matter. Similarly, certain forms of microbial life on earth can produce gregite. The combination of these minerals, which appear to have formed by electron transfer reactions between the sediment and organic matter, is a potential fingerprint for microbial life, which would use these reactions to produce energy for growth. In other words, there's an energy potential of these electrons as they are transferred. That potential energy is converted into the energy for life, again, if this is actually life. The minerals also can be generated abiotically or without the presence of life. Hence, there are ways to produce them without biological reactions, including sustained high temperature this is important, acidic conditions, and binding by organic compounds. However, the rocks at Bright Angel do not show evidence that they experienced high temperatures or acidic conditions, so those are two of the ways you can produce this abiotically. And it is unknown whether the organic compounds present would have been capable of catalyzing the reactions at low temperatures. So at the very least, you'd need to have organic compounds around, if not organic life. The discovery was particularly surprising because it involves some of the youngest sedimentary rocks the mission has invented. Investigated. Again, that means water was present on the surface of Mars much more recently than might have been expected. An earlier hypothesis assumed that signs of ancient life would be confined to older rock formations. This finding suggests that Mars could have been habitable for a longer period or later in the planet's history than previously thought, and that the older rocks also might hold signs of life that are simply harder to detect. Astrobiological claims, particularly those related to the potential discovery of past extraterrestrial life, require extraordinary evidence said Katie Stack Morgan, Perseverance's project scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California. Getting such a significant finding as a potential biosignature on Mars into a peer-reviewed publication such as Nature is a crucial step in the scientific process because it ensures the rigor, validity, and significance of our results. And while abiotic explanations for what we see at Bright Angel are less likely given the paper's findings, we cannot rule them out. So again, potential signs for life, not actually life, but they spent a year trying to figure out other ways that they could explain this, and they haven't been able to do that yet. And now let's turn to the original paper. I will leave links to all of this stuff, of course, in the description so you can read this at your leisure. It is, you know, <laughs> it's got many, many pages. As you can see from the title, we're not getting like, hey, potential signs of life. Redox-driven mineral and organic associations in Jezero Crater Mars. So that just screams life detected, right? Yeah, exactly. So anyway, you can see this was received on 13 November of 2024, so almost a year ago. It was accepted. It was peer-reviewed for a very long period of time, accepted on the 15th of July, and then published yesterday as I record this. And you can also see there are a lot of authors, so good job, guys. That's amazing. You all deserve this because a lot of people have spent a lot of time, like decades of their lives, putting this mission together, so everyone deserves to be in this paper. In fact, probably a lot more people than are actually in the paper. All right, so reading the abstract, the Perseverance rover has explored and sampled igneous and sedimentary rocks with in Jezero Crater to characterize early Martian geological processes and habitability and search for potential biosignatures. Upon entering Naredva Vallis on Jezero Crater's western edge, Perseverance investigated distinctive mudstone and conglomerate outcrops of the Bright Angel Formation. Here we report a detailed geological, petrographic, and geochemical survey of these rocks and show that organic carbon-bearing mudstones in the Bright Angel Formation contain sub-millimeter scale nodules and millimeter scale 
large-scale reaction fronts enriched in ferrous iron phosphate and sulfide minerals, likely vivianite and gregite, respectively. This organic carbon appears to have participated in post-depositional redox reactions that produce the observed iron phosphate and iron sulfide minerals. So yeah, that's a mouthful, but that just basically means that the stuff was already there and this reaction took place, you know, after the deposit was made, I guess. Geological context and petrography indicate that these reactions occurred at low temperatures, so that's an important point. Within this context, we review the various pathways by which redox reactions that involved organic matter can produce the observed suite of iron, sulfur, and phosphorus-bearing minerals in laboratory and natural environments on Earth. Ultimately, we conclude that analysis of the core sample collected from this unit using high-sensitivity instrumentation on Earth will enable the measurements required to determine the origin of the minerals, organics, and textures it contains. So as I said here in this note, life, the word life, is nowhere to be seen here. Obviously, much more carefully stated than in the press release. Also, this is a bid right here. This last part is a bid for the Mars sample return project to actually take place. And I'm going to get to that again in just a minute at the end of this video. I'm going to jump right to to the summary because that's where they state things the most clearly here and again I just don't have the capacity to read this and understand it particularly well. In summary our analysis leads us to conclude that the Bright Angel Formation contains textures chemical and mineral characteristics and organic signatures that warrant consideration as quote potential biosignatures. That is a feature that is consistent with biological processes and that when encountered challenges the researcher to attribute it to either inanimate or biological processes compelling them them to gather more data. So yeah, so basically they're just like, we think it's life, it could be life, we don't know, we need more information. Before reaching a conclusion as to the presence or absence of life, this assessment is further supported by the geological context of the Bright Angel Formation, which indicates that it is sedimentary in origin and deposited from water under habitable conditions. Many significant questions remain about the origin of the nodules and reaction fronts encountered by Perseverance. We suggest that further in situ laboratory modeling and field analog research into both abiotic and biological processes that give rise to the suite of minerals and organic phases observed in the Bright Angel Formation will improve our understanding of the conditions under which they formed. Ultimately, the return of samples from Mars for study on Earth, including the Sapphire Canyon sample collected from the Bright Angel Formation, would provide the best opportunity to understand the processes that gave rise to the unique features described here. So a lot of hemming and hawing the scientific process is very, very careful, especially when it comes to major claims like this. If this does hold true, there are Nobel Prizes involved for the lead authors in this research project because this is, I mean, this is bigger almost than anything that we've discovered ever if we discover life on another planet. So as I responded to this article yesterday, if this holds true, two things follow. Number one, we must consider why the galaxy isn't teeming with obvious technological life. A great filter later than abiogenesis is then likely. In other words, life forming on planets all around the universe would be very likely, but technology gets Getting to the stage of technology, multicellular life that is intelligent and is able to build technology, there's some filter between the genesis of life and getting to that stage that we haven't seen, or it's a dark forest out there and nobody's showing themselves to us. We don't know the answer, but anyway, that should be looked into very, very carefully because the question is, why don't we see technological life everywhere? And number two, we must travel to Mars, Europa, Venus, and other places in the solar system and discover if life still exists there today, because of course microbial life living in the past is one thing, but actually discovering life currently, that is a whole different ballgame. And then finally, I said, what an amazing day. Gilbert Levin might finally be vindicated. He was the lead on the labeled sample return on the Viking landers, which actually indicated there was a good chance that there was active life going on under the surface of Mars, just a few centimeters down under the Martian surface. And NASA and the public really rejected that option over time. They just said, no, this is impossible. But if we see evidence of ancient life, like we can in this image here, these leopard spots, and that is born worn out, and then we can actually dig under the surface and see if there is actually life that still exists there today. I mean, it's one thing to show that there is life that existed in the past when Mars was much wetter. It's another thing entirely to show that life is actually still existent today. That would be an even more remarkable event. So what of the sample return? What of the gold standard science that NASA is doing all of this? I want to finally touch on the fact that NASA's budget is being threatened with massive, massive reductions, and that projects like these that take decades to happen and that only government 
governments can support. I mean, this is stuff, private companies are just not going to do this kind of thing. It's science for science's sake. There's no monetary return for any of this kind of stuff. SpaceX is the only exception, <laughs> potentially with the chopsticks. They're about the only exception that might actually do this for science's sake. But in general, only countries and very, very wealthy countries can support these kinds of insane missions that can take 20 plus years to come to fruition, to go out and explore the reaches of our solar system, just to find out what is out there. These kinds of missions need to be supported. Science needs to be supported. The sample return mission needs to be supported. Getting human beings to Mars to actually look around and see if there is actually life, either ancient fossilized life or current life that is actually still in existence on the planet. These are all incredibly important tasks. And I think that we as a society should push our government very, very strongly to continue supporting these. They cost almost nothing compared to the U.S.'s budget overall, and they provide incredible returns, both in terms of monetary returns. There are direct returns from this kind of stuff, but also just in terms of science and discovery and increased knowledge about our universe. So that's my pitch to all of you, especially in the United States, who can write your senators and Congress people and ask them to support the sciences, because this kind of stuff couldn't happen without science support for decades at a time. It's not something you just generate in six months or a year. It's something that takes decades to come to fruition. Alrighty, folks, that's what I've got for you today. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of this. Do you think this is actually signs of life or something entirely different? I would love to know your thoughts on the topic. And while you're down there, if you don't mind liking the video, it really helps out so other people can see it and consider subscribing for more of this kind of content. And in the meantime, I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.